Hello and welcome. It's Jelly Cube with another acrylic art piece today. Um, I think I'm going to do some puddle pours and see if my... Um, I'm trying to develop a pouring medium that doesn't require Floetrol or silicone to produce nice cells. So that's what I'm um, trying to achieve. So I can't, I won't disclose it till I get it perfect, but I'm just going to, um, I think, do some puddle pours today. I'm gonna just use some of the white that I have pre-mixed just for the very edges of my canvas. And then I've got some paint left over from, that I scraped from a previous pour. Um, I scraped it up from the previous pour that was runoff, so I'm going to use some of that also. So I'm just going to just just go around my edges with this, so it, it it's got the edges sorted before anything. I've got I've actually got it on my spinner because um, previous piece was on my spinner, so I just wanted to um, use that. So this is what I scraped up from my previous pour. So I'm not sure whether I should just pour it on and spread it out. Figure eight, invigorate. So that was leftovers from the previous pour. And then because it's in this uh, plastic jug, I can just leave the jug um, with a, lot, a stick in it like that and it dries and then when it's dry I just pull the stick or pull all the um, paint off it too so I just leave that sitting there so your jug's easy enough to clean up then uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy radio should I pour yeah no I should I'm gonna spread that in it doesn't matter if it mixes with that at all what a lovely blue. They were all different blues mixed together that I'd done on a previous pour. Sort of um, definitely would be easy to do a landscape background when you've got this kind of blended colours like this. And you can do it. I'm not doing that today, but it's certainly easy to use your colours like this for a blended landscape. worry about my edges at the end well, usually the paint will get blown or tilted over them so rightio so I'm going to do some extra puddles on here in the similar colors but then also puddles with a pop so I'll put some of the um, turquoise down It's been a little while before I've done these puddle pours. But they're always fun to do. And you always get different results. Uh, I have that turquoise and then I'll put a bit of the, um, the cool blue in. That'll make it pop. But I certainly want to put some other colours in this too. all good fun using up the last drips of paint from two previous pours that I just did. So I've got two pours out of these, well this is the third one out of these 113 mil cups, paper cups, and I'm going to add a bit of the, this is called Tahiti, very exotic name isn't it? relax and do it take your time I don't know why I'm rushing I always think oh people don't like to look at the boring bits they like to get straight to the but this is all part of the process so really you should show it all I guess radio I am going to now add some I have got some dark sea here but I think 
I will need to pop it into a smaller cup because I'm not going to be able to control it in this um, bigger container. So that's the um, dark sea. Oops. lovely <laughs> it was with what was left in the bottom okie doke now I definitely want to add some real pops of colour in here so I'm going to really go the fluoro orange not too much but I do want to add some pops of colour orange and then I will add a bit of that dark sea again to the orange Need a bit more in my cup so, a little lip out of that so add that to the fluoro orange it's all good fun all good fun And then to top off the pop of colour, I'm going to add some of the um, bright yellow. I might just keep it to these. Oops. I've got the paint on the thicker side um, today. It was this way for a previous pour that I did. So. Yeah, that's running off there. Oh well, it must have wanted to be there, so that's not a problem. Radio, I'm going to leave it at that for that. Where is my. Can't find it. Okay, my gold. Got a bit of gold here. So I'm going to put it just in the darker colours. I mean, the dark and the blues will maybe send it green. I think I might leave it at that. I think I've got enough going on there. More than enough going on there. So what I'm going to do now is give that a gentle tilt all over the canvas and just take it really nice and slow. No hurry. So just watch all these lovely colours mush together. I probably could have put a lot more colour on there, but I would if I was going to leave them all as a, a tilt, but I'm not going to. Of course I'm not. <laughs> That would be too simple to go a little bit step further. So I'm hoping that that fluoro orange will give a lovely like pop in there, a trace colour. It's like traced around the outside edges. That's nice. They're beautiful colours for sure, but I'm not sure whether adding the more candy colours of the yellow and the... Um, Turn it around. Yellow and orange will um, take off the stunningness of the those blues I've got in there and turquoise. But we will see. This is why I do this. You can learn from my mistakes. If it turns out well, then you know you can do it and you're going to have a winner winner chicken dinner. And if it turns out not so well, then don't do a jilly. <laughs> adjust it accordingly. Right, EO. So I'm just re-tilting my canvas back to its original 
position well meaning that you just tilt the paints paint so it's evenly distributed not all at one end or the other right here i'm going to do something really weird as you would expect i'm going to do a bit of wiggles over it with this very pale cool mint got something in my head and I'm just hoping and praying to the pouring gods turn out this is color I've had mixed up a while and it is the very dark burnt umber so it's mixed burnt umber mixed with a good blob of black to send it even darker now you probably think this crazy lady what the heck is she doing I'm just got to try it if it doesn't turn out then you know I will work it out, but certainly don't stress about it. Just enjoy the process. I'm going to give this one big swipe a with this soft plastic file divide. So I just dropped that very tip in that burnt umber. I'm not too worried about the top because I can always tilt it back. I just had a feeling that the burnt umber with these colours would absolutely pop your socks off. As you know, if you know me and how I pour it, I love, love, love colour. I do do the earthy, beigey, beigey colours for certain things I do love, but um, my true love is the mixing of colours. And now, ah, my, <laughs> my um, turntable is doing what it's supposed to do and spinning, but not when I want it to. So, okie doke. I'm pretty sure she said that these this brown is going to make those other colors absolutely pop. It may be a bit of wishful thinking, but you know, I'm going to leave not as much as what I thought it would, but I can see all that lovely color is under there and it is slowly developing in front of my eyes. You can very well leave it like that, but I know that there's such a gorgeous and wonderful amount of colour under there that I have to bring up those colour. It's just begging me, bring up the colour. Bring up the colour. So the only way I know, the best way I know to bring up that colour and highlight it is obviously with a balloon. You could use anything, I guess. I'm gonna just leave this for uh, 10 minutes while I have a cuppa. So the paint will absorb into the canvas and hopefully those cells will pop out and um, I'm gonna come back to it. I'm back to finish this burnt umber swipe. I'm not sure now. Um, I just did a few little balloon kisses in it and it's brought up some of the lovely colors. So I'm really gonna, um, try and bring up all those lovely colours that I know are there in some absolute lovely feathered effects. So yes, you can absolutely create a feather effect with your uh, balloon. So you can do all sorts with it. Just, just go wild with it. Just try. Look at the beautiful feather effects. It just brings lovely effects up. And when these are um, glossed, when they're fully dry and they're glossed or they're acrylic, um, oh, well, I can't think of the name now. Ja, 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 ja. Resin, oh my goodness. They look absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna just go for it, especially on this spinner, it's pr pretty good that you can, um, turn it around so it's got actually more balloon rolls this time than kisses so for effects Benson um, you're gonna make everybody jump um, I'll bring you down because you cannot see how effective those balloon kisses are until you're really up close to them well the balloon rolls they look gorgeous so yes, you can absolutely do fantastic feather effects with a balloon. Um, I'm happy with that. Oh, I've got paint all over my dress. Oh, then silly jilly, silly daffa. Right here, I'm going to bring you up close and have a look at this. 
So these are the just the beautiful colours and that burnt umber really plays so nicely with these blues and turquoises. And just that pop of orange and yellow in there. And of course having a lots of the gold metallic has caused a beautiful shimmery effect through the whole thing. So when that's dried and got a coat of varnish or resin, <laughs> it will look really stunning, the sparkling away. So of course you don't have to do the balloon kisses, rolls or whatever, that's your choice, it's your art, your rules, your way. You just take from my um, art inspiration the bits that you like and then you add them to your own ideas. So that's what it's all about, is getting your own style and your own um, yeah, forte, getting something that you enjoy doing and that you're happy with every time. So I'm really happy with that. I love it. I hope you do too. And until tomorrow, my lovelies, I will say bye for now. Please take care of yourselves.